Hi everyone, welcome back. The learning goal for this video is to determine the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons in one or more of the isotopes of an element, and to be able to calculate the atomic mass of an element using the percent abundance and mass of its naturally occurring isotopes. So in this video, we will be working with the atomic symbol. And this is showing you an example of an isotope of magnesium, which has 12 neutrons. So what is an isotope? Well, isotopes are atoms of the same element. They have different mass numbers. So therefore they have the same number of protons because it's the same element and each element has a unique atomic number. And the atomic number is the same as the number of protons as we learned in an earlier video. But because isotopes have different mass numbers, that means they have a different number of neutrons. So isotopes have the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. And they can be distinguished by their atomic symbols. So once again, this is showing an isotope of magnesium. And as you can see here, magnesium's abbreviation is Mg. The number on top is the mass number, which is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. And then the number here down below is the atomic number. This number is not always drawn in because if you know the symbol, the element symbol, then you can find the atomic number above that symbol. So for magnesium, atomic number 12. And this is a core chemistry skill, learning how to write atomic symbols for isotopes. So let's practice with them. Given the atomic symbols below, let's determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So I will first work with this oxygen isotope. <clears throat> and remember 16 is the mass number, eight is the atomic number. And remember the atomic number is equal to the number of protons. So this isotope of oxygen has eight protons. And because these are neutral elements, then the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons, as we learned in a previous video. So protons is equal to electrons for neutral So we have eight electrons and then 16 is the mass number. And the mass number is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Because remember, electrons have very little mass. So we treat them as zero, um, but protons and neutrons do have a mass. So the mass number is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So therefore, if we wanted to figure out the number of neutrons, we would take the mass number and subtract the number of protons. So in this case, we would take 16 minus eight, which is eight. So this one, this isotope has eight neutrons. All right, let's look at this isotope symbol here for phosphorus. So once again, 15 is the atomic number. So that means we have 15 protons and 15 electrons. And how many neutrons do we have? 31 minus 15 is 16 neutrons, excellent. All right, 
So then we have the last isotope, which is zinc. And it looks like the mass number for zinc is 65. And the atomic number for zinc is 30. And so let's go ahead and write that down. So we have 65 for the atomic number for zinc and 30 for, or 65 for the mass number and 30 for the atomic number, which means there are 30 protons and 30 electrons. How many neutrons are there? Excellent. 65 minus 30 is 35 neutrons. Very good. So we can determine the number of subatomic particles given an isotope symbol. Now, the majority of elements on the periodic table have multiple isotopes. For example, magnesium has three naturally occurring isotopes and they all have different mass numbers, but they all occur at different percentages in nature. We'll learn about what's called percent abundance in a little bit. But one I wanna point out is that when you see the number below any element, that is the atomic mass. So if we look at, for example, magnesium, this is not the mass number. I have to provide the mass number for you for each isotope. The number you see on the periodic table is the atomic mass, which will be an, a weighted average, and we will learn to calculate that soon. Um, it also, you will learn it is the molar mass of that element as well. So we will work with that number quite often, but I really just want to emphasize the fact that this number is not the mass number. Let's look at magnesium more closely because here you can see that this isotope of magnesium, magnesium 24, is 78.7% .7 abundant in nature. There's a lot of it there but magnesium 25 is only 10% in nature and magnesium 26 is only about 11% abundant in nature. And so when we mean by weighted average, that means because there's more of this isotope here, the atomic mass of that element will have a mass closer to the mass number of that isotope because there's just more of it. And so you can see here, these are the isotopes of magnesium, a little bit closer look at the data. And so sometimes you might see I have the symbol written as the elements abbreviation, its symbol, and then dash, and then the mass number. Because like I said, we know if, if it's magnesium, the atomic number is always 12, so that's not always included. So this is another way to look at specific isotopes. Once again, I'd have to provide you the mass number, which will be a whole number. And you can see that here. I mean, technically the mass of this isotope is 23.99, but we round it to 24. And once again, this number here, how available it is in nature, if I have any amount of magnesium metal, then I will always have about 78.7% .7 of it as this isotope, 10% as magnesium 25, and 11% as magnesium 26. So this is the percent abundance. Once again, I'd have to provide that data for you. So go ahead, try to do this study check on your own, pause the video, and then come back and check your work with me. All right, so my favorite element, carbon, consists of three isotopes in nature, carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. And see how this symbol doesn't have the atomic number, but we can look that up on the periodic table. From these symbols, let's determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. All right, so first things first, let's go find my favorite element, there we are. Carbon has the atomic number six, 
And that tells me the number of what? The number of protons. So let's go ahead and put six for all of these, because that doesn't change. These are all carbon. So they have all the same atomic number. And because these are neutral elements, the number of electrons is also what? Very good, it's also six. All right, now they each have a different number of neutrons. That's the definition of isotopes, right? Same atomic number, but different number of neutrons. So we need to take the mass number and subtract the number of protons. So carbon-12 has how many neutrons? Six. Carbon-13 has how many neutrons? Seven, because 13 minus six is seven. And carbon number 14 has how many neutrons? Eight. That is 14 minus six is eight. All right, let's try something a little different. Go ahead, pause the video and write the atomic symbols for the atoms with the following subatomic particles based on the information provided, and then come back and check your work with me. All right, so I like to think of this as a puzzle. I have an element or an isotope that has eight protons, eight neutrons, and eight electrons. The first thing I'm gonna wanna do is look up which element has an atomic number of eight. Looks like it is oxygen. So I'm gonna write oxygen. This is for part A. So the symbol is oxygen and it has atomic number eight. So I'm gonna include that in there for the isotope symbol. And then I, all I need to figure out now is the mass number and the mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So eight plus eight is 16. So that is the isotope symbol. <clears throat> for part A. What about for part B? So we have 17 protons, 20 neutrons, and 17 electrons. So I'm going to look up the element that has 17 as its atomic number. Oh, it's over here. It is chlorine with the symbol Cl. So let's go ahead and write Cl and then 17 for the atomic number below there. And then what is the mass number? Number of protons plus number of neutrons, 17 plus 20, 37. So this is chlorine 37. Part C, we have 47 protons, 60 neutrons, and 47 electrons. So I'm gonna look up the element that has atomic number 47. Looks like it is silver, AG. So let's write that down. We have AG and that's the atomic number 47. And then we just need to figure out the mass number, which is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. 47 plus 60 is 107. So this is silver 107. <clears throat> So not only should you be able to determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons from an isotope symbol, but you should be able to derive an isotope symbol like we've done here, given the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. All right, once again, pause the video, try the study check on your own, and then check your work with me. All right, so which of the pairs below are isotopes of the same element? It looks like this is B. When we're looking for the same element, they must have the same atomic number. And in this case, this particular symbol here, isotope symbols have the same atomic number. These have different atomic numbers, so they must be different elements. This is my favorite element, carbon, right? Atomic number six. <clears throat> and then the second question is, in which of the pairs below do both atoms have eight neutrons? And remember, to find the number of neutrons, we have to subtract the mass number from the atomic number. 
So it looks like 15 minus seven here and 16 minus eight here will give us eight neutrons each. This one would give us a different number of neutrons, right? But in this case, we get eight and we get eight here as well. And so C is the answer to question number two. All right, let's come back to atomic mass. <clears throat> so once again, the atomic mass is the weighted average of all the naturally occurring isotopes of that element. The number on the periodic table below the chemical symbol is the atomic mass. And later on, we'll also learn that it is the molar mass when we learn stoichiometry. And so as giving you another example, chlorine has two naturally occurring isotopes in nature. So if I have a sample of chlorine, about 76% of that chlorine will be chlorine 35. There's a lot more of that there. And about 37% or I'm sorry, sorry, about 24% will be chlorine 37. And so notice how the atomic mass is closer to the number 35 than it is to the number 37 because there's more of isotope 35 available. Whereas if there were 50-50% and you took the average, the atomic mass would have been 36. So once again, it's not just the average of the mass numbers, it's not 36. The actual atomic mass, it ha is, has a lot more of chlorine 35. And so that's why the atomic mass is closer to the number 35. That's what it means to be a weighted average. So we have to take into account the percent abundance. So to calculate atomic mass, we will use the experimental percent abundance of each isotope. You multiply the percent abundance by the atomic mass of that isotope, and then you sum the total mass of all the isotopes. <clears throat> so here's an example coming back to magnesium. Um, so for the magnesium one, we have three different naturally occurring isotopes with their abundance. So you take the abundance and divide by 100 and you multiply it by its mass. So I'd have to give you the mass. And if I do give you the full mass, then you just use that, that number. Um, or if I give you 24, then you just use 24. So you take the mass of the isotope, multiply it by the percent abundance that's divided by 100. And you get the contribution to the atomic mass. And so there's this first calculation, then the second calculation, you do the same pattern as well as for the third. And then you add them all up together and you will get the weighted average mass. You can try doing the same for chlorine as well um, because you have the percent abundance and you can just use the mass number 35 and mass number 37. So you can do the same calculation and you will end up with an atomic mass very close to 35.45. In this table, here is some atomic mass of some elements. Um, for example, we have lithium, which has two naturally occurring isotopes. The weighted average is 6.941 atomic mass units for lithium. And the most prevalent isotope is seven. And notice how the atomic mass is closer to the number seven than it is to the number six. Carbon has carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14. But notice how the atomic mass is close to 12. Um, and that speaks to the fact that the most prevalent isotope for carbon is carbon-12. And so carbon-13 and carbon-14 do not have as high of percent abundance in nature. All right, go ahead and try to do the study check on your own and then come back and check your work with me. So lithium consists of two naturally occurring isotopes, lithium-6 and lithium-7. 
let's use the periodic table to predict which isotope is the most prevalent one. So once again, we're kind of using our knowledge of the fact that atomic mass is a weighted average. We just looked at this one, I just showed you in the previous table, so we don't necessarily have to do any math here. All we need to observe is that the atomic mass of 6.941 atomic mass units is close to seven atomic mass units. And we were just told and reminded that there's two naturally occurring isotopes for lithium, lithium-6 and lithium-7. And without going through that data that we just did here on um, this slide, if we didn't have the information, we should still be able to deduce without percent abundances um, that lithium-7 is the more prevalent isotope, which means it occurs more in nature because the atomic mass of lithium is closer to the mass number of lithium-7. All right. Go ahead, pause the video, try the study check on your own, and then check your work with me. So gallium is an element found in lasers used in compact disc players. In a sample of gallium, there is 60.1% of gallium-69 and 39.9% of gallium-71. What is the atomic mass of gallium? So once again, we're gonna use the example we did earlier right here to determine the atomic mass of magnesium, we had to take the mass of the isotope times the abundance divided by 100 and do it for each isotope and then add them all up. So atomic mass is equal to 68.926 times, I'm gonna put brackets here, times, 60.10 over 100. And so if you are given a more exact atomic mass for the isotope, use all the numbers. <clears throat> Plus 70.925 times 39.90 over 100. <clears throat> now be careful when you plug this information into your calculator. Um, if you're using a graphing calculator, you can determine this value here and store it in your calculator. So you are allowed graphing calculators in my class. If you wanna learn how to use your graphing calculator to store information, please let me know and I can help you out. Um, if you have a scientific calculator, you won't be able to store the information, so you may want to write down the number um, before adding them up. With calculators, if you input the information um, and the calculator can't recognize what's the order of operation, then you might get a calculator error um, or you'll get a an answer that's different than the correct answer. So really become familiar with your calculator so you can feel confident with the answers that are given based on how you crunch the numbers in. So I do have a graphing calculator and I'm going to kind of discuss how I'm inputting it into my calculator right now. So the first thing I like to do is just do this number here. So I have 60.10 divided by 100, which is 0 0.601. And then I'm gonna multiply that by 68.926. Now, if I had a scientific calculator, I would write the value here up above and maybe a different color pen. And I like to keep all the numbers. <laughs> Um, just so I don't have rounding error in the end. If you were to round this to 41, you may get significant rounding error in your answer. So it's always safer to keep as many numbers as possible before you give your final answer. Now I'm gonna store this value in my calculator since I do 
have a graphing calculator. And then I'm going to do the next calculation. So 39.9 divided by 100 times 70.925. And once again, I get 28.299075. And I wanted the calculator to do this here and this one separately and then add them at the very end. Sometimes if we don't use parentheses or brackets, it may add this and then multiply that whole answer by this here and it won't end up being the correct answer. So order of operation matter here. <laughs> so with that being said, I'm gonna add the answer that I got from like the 41.424526. And I get that the answer is 69.724. AMU. Now, when it comes to atomic mass, we tend to keep at least two to three decimal places um, or, or, you know, places after the decimal point. Um, so, you know, don't stress too much about uh, significant figures for these types of problems, um, but definitely don't want to round the atomic mass to the ones place. We want to at least keep to the hundredths or the thousandths place. And we can check our work actually on the periodic table. Gallium's um, atomic mass is 69.72. And that does match with what we calculated based on the percent abundance and the atomic mass of each of gallium's isotopes. All right, thank you for watching. And as always, email me with any questions.